Hi, how you doing today? Welcome to the Bridge Connection. Oh, I was just, I've had an interesting uh, couple of days or a few days. Uh, good stuff. I got a couple of songs in the mail from friends of mine back in the, back in the late 60s, early 70s, and uh, Coach Will, who teaches our, our New Believers class at the Bridge, uh, sent me one uh, in his time, and I played it. It's so beautiful. And I began to remember one of those, all of the songs, and I tried to sing them all, which probably doesn't bring any glory to God at all, but I was trying to remember and sing them all. And I remembered a, a song that we used to sing. We used to sing a lot back in the day when we all first got saved because uh, it was so wonderful. And we would use the Bible as our songbook. In fact, we all had the King James Version, uh, and we would just sing out the King James Version. And I want to read this psalm to you, uh, this, verses 7 through 11 out of the King James the law of the Lord is perfect. We just sing this word for word. Converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them, there is great reward. Some of you remember that. I almost started singing it, and then I thought that would probably be my, my last chance to meet in your home with you, because you wouldn't, probably wouldn't turn me on again. But I was reading that and, and remembering those days, and remember what we're learning about the Lord, and um, I just want to talk about these verses out of Psalm 19 today. I want you to notice the, the subtle, distinct terms in these verses. It says, the law of the Lord converts the soul. The testimony of the Lord makes wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord rejoice the heart. The commandments of the Lord enlighten the eyes. The fear of the Lord, excuse me, the fear of the Lord endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous. Um, just incredible things. I want to talk about these a little bit today. We're talking, going to talk about the Word and how powerful and what it does for us. So try to stay with me on this. And, and um, it's not that you don't understand. It's the way I try to communicate it. Seven, first part of verse 7 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So let's deal with that a little bit. God's law is perfect. It's the source of conversion. His Word, God's law, refers to His teachings, uh, His instructions. It's used both... Uh, of the law given to Israel through Moses and of God's complete teachings in the entire Bible. David states that the law is both perfect and that it converts the soul. Perfect has two shades of meaning. It means complete or entire. God's word is his complete revelation to humanity. This is a significant statement about the sufficiency of the scripture. I want the word to be the most important thing in this world to us because it, it points it towards Jesus and to the Father. God's word provides everything God wants us to know and it provides everything we need to know for this life and to prepare us for eternity. Perfect also means flawless, undefiled, without blemish or spot. This too is an essential statement about the inerrancy of scripture. Every word of every statement in the Bible is absolute 100% truth. Converting means turning or returning to. The first great benefit of Scripture is that it leads us to turn to God. As the sun returns in the heavens, so God's Word returns the sinner to God. Scripture tells us everything we need to know about salvation. God's perfect law reveals our sinfulness, and our great need for a Savior. It tells us about Jesus Christ and that salvation is possible only through faith in Him. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.15 says, this is Paul writing to Timothy, and he's saying to him, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures. Now look at this. Which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So we, all we need to know we are in the Scriptures for salvation. Second thing, the second part of verse 7, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. I needed that back in the day, man. Oh, making wise the simple. 
God's testimony is, is trustworthy. God's uh, testimony is, is the source of wisdom. God's witness in his word is, is sure. It, you, you can believe it and you can build your life on it. It's a solid foundation, one that will not crumble, but will stand through the storms of life. Matthew 7, 24 and 25 talks about what we build our house on. God's word will support you and me or hold us up in every situation that we will ever face. Scripture reveals God's amazing wisdom to, to us. Through God's word, every person has the privilege of gaining wisdom from the Lord himself. But each of us have to take action. God will not force his word or himself on anyone. We have to move towards him and then. So those who are simple, me, lack discernment and good judgment because they are inexperienced and unlearned. That, that defined me. By studying God's word, we could acquire the skills necessary to be successful in life and to avoid its dangers. And all of a sudden began to understand life. We can learn how to overcome or to deal with every enemy, every destructive force that any of us faith, face. Any person who applies him or herself to the word of God receives wisdom that exceeds all human education and learning. When I started reading the word, it became my life. Life lit up and I began to understand life and what it was all about. Verse eight says, God's statutes are right. They bring joy to the heart. So the third great benefit of scripture is that it brings a deep, abiding joy to our lives. The Lord's statutes or precepts are his detailed instructions concerning uh, matters of, of everyday life. For the Old Testament Jew, the, the statutes related to what they ate, how they dressed, how they kept clean, and on and on and on. God laid down certain basic laws and commandments, and the statutes applied them to to specific situations in their life. Now these statutes are right. They're straight, upright, morally and ethically right. How do God's statutes bring joy to the heart? Well, I think they give us clear direction for the specific situations and decisions we face in life. We have the answers to our questions and we know what to do when we consult God's word. We're not left uh, wandering and unsure about what is right, God's word will show us every single time. Uh, the, the, the word stirs us to, to avoid the, the painful, tragic consequences of sin. See, by obeying God's precepts, doing what is right, we reap the joyous benefits of righteousness and we spare ourselves <laughs> the excruciating wages of, of sin. We don't have to he paid for that, so we don't have to experience that when we're walking in obedience. His word teaches us how to, how to please him. Those who truly and sincerely love God desire to please him. Our desire should be to make him happy, to put a smile on his face. Pleasing the Lord brings a, a calm assurance and a, and a peace to our heart that results in joy, in, in joy uh, flooding into our souls. First Thessalonians 4, 1 says, Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. So our desire needs to be to please God, one of the desires, and I love that. The words, the precepts of God give us insight into God's purpose for, for our trials and, and afflictions. See, this makes, us, this makes it possible for us to rejoice in the midst of some of life's most difficult moments, we can rejoice. Romans chapter five, verse three says, and not only that, but we also, listen to this, we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Second Corinthians 12, nine and 10 says, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Do you see what the word does? 
You see how the word can, can bring these things to our life? That's what it's there for. Uh, second part of, of, of verse 8 says, The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The commandments of the Lord are pure, enlightening the eyes. By using the word pure, David again declares that God's word is perfect, flawless, undefiled. Pure is also translated as, as clean, uh, choice, clear. Uh, grasp its significance in this verse. God's word is a shining light for our lives. And it goes on in that verse to say, enlightening the eyes. The fourth great benefit of, of scripture is that it enlightens our eyes. What in the world does that mean? Well, it means that God's word guides us in life. God's word gives us insight. God's word gives us understanding. It means that God's word brightens our eyes or, or fills us with life and strength so we can move on. Verse nine says, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The fifth great benefit of scripture is that it stirs us to, to fear the Lord. Now, to fear the Lord is not paranoia. To fear the Lord is, is to reverence him and, and recognize his sovereignty, recognize his power, recognize his holiness and righteousness. It's to understand that these attributes demand his judgment and wrath upon all sin because he's holy, he's righteous, he's powerful. So sin has to be judged. And this fear, this uh, understanding of who he is drives us to believe the gospel, to receive forgiveness of sins and to establish a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. The fear of the Lord is pure. It's cleansing. It's purifying. It, 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 uh, it, it compels us to live in obedience to God's commands, to walk in holiness and righteousness. See, I don't have to do these things, but when I see what the word does and I'm in the word, it's a pleasure. It endures forever. That is, it leads us to eternal life. Notice here that the fear of the Lord may also be understood as another uh, cinnamon, uh, cinnamon, synonym. <laughs> I must be hungry for God's word. Uh, Bible teacher and, and Warren Wiersbe explains in one of his commentaries, he says, this is an unusual name for scriptures, but it reminds us that we cannot learn the word of God unless we show reverence and respect and respect for the word of God. To teach the Bible is to teach the fear of the Lord. Second part of verse nine through 11 says this, the judgments of the Lord are true and they are righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. I love singing this. Sweeter also than honey, and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. God's judgments or laws are true and fair, it means they're righteous and just. The word judgments emphasizes what God has deemed to be right and wrong. It's, it's another term for God's law. Every one of God's ordinances is a reflection of his holy character. He is the very embodiment of, of truth and righteousness. And, and this word reminds us that we are all accountable to God and that God will judge the world in righteousness. How? According to his holy word. And David concluded this exaltation of scripture by proclaiming what, what God's word meant to him personally. And I absolutely, absolutely love this. And I want to make it my own. David would have rather have God's word than gold. In fact, he would not just choose the word of God over a small measure of gold, but over much, a tremendous quantity of fine gold. This is gold that has been carefully refined. It's the purest, most valuable gold. David loved the word of God. It was sweet to him. 
like the taste of fresh honey from the comb. He truly valued what God's commands did for him. The word warned him of the consequences of disobedience and it rewarded him for obedience to its teachings. In verse 11, the reward for obeying scripture is great, is abundant. Our reward in this life is the blessings of God and our reward after this life is that we will be received when we stand before God in judgment and enjoy eternity in his glorious presence. And that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm longing for. As Jesus stood face to face against Satan in the wilderness, he declared the supreme importance of God's specific written witness. But Jesus answered and said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus' quotation out of Deuteronomy is a reminder that every one of us needs the word of God. The word of God is the source of sub substance for, for our lives. Notice again the great benefits of scripture outlined by David in this, pas in this passage. It is the source of salvation, verse 7. The word gives wisdom, verse 7. The word brings true joy to our lives, verse 8. It enlightens our eyes, also in verse 8. It stirs us, stirs us to fear the Lord, in verse 9. Through the word of God, we are born again, and we are completely equipped for every need of this life and for eternity. It's all we need, the word of God, what Jesus has done for us. God's word is alive, powerful, it's inspired. What does this mean? It means that it has been breathed by God, given to us through his Holy Spirit. It's not just another book, it's God's book. And through it, he has revealed himself, his undeniable love for us, his purpose for the world and for all of mankind. It is perfect, true, authoritative, trustworthy, and sufficient for every human need. And my prayer is that we, like David, may treasure, love, and appreciate God's holy word. If we will read it, study it, meditate on it, obey it, we will please the Lord and enjoy the fullness of God's blessings through its life-changing power. John 17, 17, sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. That was Jesus in John 17, 17, the high priestly prayer, praying to the Father for you and for me that he would sanctify us, set us apart through his word. My, my dear friends, I, I, I pray that we all get a new love affair with the word of God. We, we all will we'll, we'll, we'll begin to read the word and let it do what it, it's supposed to do in our lives. The answers are here. We're, we're running here and running there and trying to find this, and it's, it's right here in the word of God. I, 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 my, my prayer is that we will begin to walk in the truth of God's word and, and know how powerful it is. And what we have here right in this book is, is the greatest gift man could ever receive. It's a gift from the God of this universe himself. And it reveals him. It reveals why Jesus came and who he is and what he's done for us. It reveals how we live, how we walk, what we do, how we, how we handle every situation, how we can live in joy and peace constantly. You know what, I, I just, uh, I think we're going to close this segment with the, just a worship song. Well, it's not back in the 60s or 70s. It's a worship song. And uh, I'd like you to just can maybe sing along as, as we close. And uh, let me pray first, and then, then we'll close with this song. I'm not singing it, Aaron is, okay? Father, we thank you for the truth of your word. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for me and us, and you've given us everything we need pertaining to life and godliness everything we need is right here lord and i pray the words that we spoke today and the verses that we read today 
would penetrate our hearts and every one of us would, would say, yes, that's true. That's what it's all about. So Lord, I ask that you would uh, set us free to begin to walk in your word in ways that we never have. We thank you, Jesus. We choose to worship you for just a few moments. Thank you, Jesus, we love you. Your name we pray. No study tomorrow, it's Saturday, Sunday. I'll see you Sunday morning, nine o'clock for our Sunday worship service. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, I think we'll have, a, we'll have a good time in the Word together. God bless you. Sing along with us, would you? God, I look to you, and I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, you wear my helpless from. Give me wisdom, as you know just what to do. Hallelujah. 